We're in a new boom period for fighting games. Last year had Street Fighter 6 and Mortal Kombat 1, which are absolutely amazing, but the fighting game hype train has not stopped, as now we just got Tekken 8, the newest installment in the long-running series, the third best-selling fighting game series, in fact, with an ongoing story that is reaching its conclusion, along with looking like it has a lot more to offer than just that. And even though it doesn't necessarily reinvent the wheel, that's not particularly a bad thing, as the amount of content and overall depth to Tekken 8 is impressive. But what do I think of it? I, I, I just told you kind of what I think of it, but let's talk about it. Hi guys, DPX here reviewing today, Tekken 8. Now before we get started, you know what to do, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you're new, hit the bell, leave a comment, or I will throw you off of a cliff. <laughs> Starting off with the good, there is quite a lot to go over with Tekken 8. First off, the roster is quite solid for a starting roster with a whopping 30 characters, and I feel that everyone in this game is a lot of fun, whether it be your icons of the series like Jin or Kazuya, other regulars like King, Paul, or Nina, your goofy returning characters like maybe Kuma or Panda, your surprising returning characters like June, or your pretty cool newcomers like Azucena, Victor, and Reina, the last of which happens to be Heihachi's long lost daughter, showing that even though this game's story wraps up the Jin vs. Kazuya rivalry, there is still more story to tell. I'll get to the story in a little bit, but for now, each character is a lot of fun. Tekken 8 also feels really nice. As someone who loves fighting games, but full transparency, while I'm still familiar with Tekken, I never got into it as much as other fighting games, but it's a great game to pick up and play. Many fighting games are doing this now, where they give you easier controls or make playing the game easier in some way to entice newcomers or entice people who are bad at fighting games, because let's be real, the vast majority of the people who play fighting games are not pros. Kinda went on a bit of a tangent there, but what I'm saying is Tekken 8 is welcoming to anyone, whether it be a pro or a noob. I also just love how flashy the game is and it really adds to the charm. There is also the story, which I alluded to earlier. The story is meant to conclude the long-going story of the family rivalry between Jin Kazama and Kazuya Mishima. And without giving too much away of what happens, it is certainly a satisfying conclusion to the story that spanned across so many games while leaving the door open because let's be real, Tekken sells and they can't just end it. The story is exactly what you would expect out of a Tekken story, but that's not particularly a bad thing. Plus, there are certain sections of the story that caught me off guard. But normal versus battle and story are not the only modes in Tekken 8, as of course, if you got a fighting game, you gotta have an arcade mode. And Tekken 8 does something interesting with its arcade mode, as it's kinda split into two modes, sort of, in a way. I wouldn't really say that, but there, I'd say there's more two arcade modes, kind of. You have the regular arcade mode, which is where you fight multiple stages of opponents before a final boss, but then there is the arcade quest, which sort of serves as both another arcade mode along with being another story mode. Not much of a story at all, really, but think of it as the battle hub in Street Fighter 6, but instead, it's offline, there are objectives to progress through, and those objectives are arcade ladders, pretty much. I gotta say, this is very unique, and although I don't particularly love the way it's executed sometimes, I still had a lot of fun with it. But that's also not where the content stops, as Tekken Ball also makes a return, which is always neat, but it's likely you've seen many clips and screenshots of custom characters in Tekken 8. And that's because Tekken 8's customization options are crazy. You can customize your avatar, which I'll talk about later, why you have an avatar, Characters on the roster you can customize and pretty much anything, but in particular, you get to create your own costumes for your characters, which is so cool. I know that was in other Tekken games, but it's still so cool, and I think it's even better in this game. And they don't limit you by, let's say, giving you only two slots for a costume or anything of the sort. No, you get a whopping ten slots, meaning you can make up to ten costumes for each character that you have. That is so cool. This has also led to many creations online. I've seen characters like Bayonetta, the Mario Bros, Luffy, Leon Kennedy, and so much more. And Tekken 8 could have easily tarnished that positive because there are many parts or pieces of clothing for your custom costume that are locked behind in-game currency. Now I love Street Fighter 6 and I love Mortal Kombat 1, 
But if this was in those games, they would make earning the in-game currency very difficult and very grindy without spending real-world currency. But in Tekken 8, I played through the story, the arcade battle, and arcade quests, and even just after playing just a little bit. I had so much of the coins, so it's really not a grind to get money to unlock things at all. All you have to do is just play the game pretty much. Pretty much one playthrough of one character's arcade mode will get you a decent amount of in-game money. Again, I love Capcom and I love Netherrealm, but they should really take a page out of Bandai Namco's book. You also can't talk about a fighting game without talking about the online, and Tekken 8 surely does not disappoint. When you go online, you can do the usual ranked or quick match, but also, you can go to the Tekken Lounge, which is where it's like the Battle Hub in Street Fighter 6, as you have an avatar and you run around the area, interact with people, and then sit at an arcade machine to fight someone. And I love that! It adds so much character and so much personality to the game. When it comes to actually playing online though, great. No issues except for one crash that took place during the lounge, so it wasn't even during a match. And also, there's crossplay day one! That's how you do it. In terms of other positives, the visuals are absolutely stunning, and the music? Oh how Tekken never disappoints with its music. I seriously can't think of a single track in Tekken 8 that doesn't go at least a little bit hard. On PS5, even before starting the game, if you hover over the icon on the home menu, a banger starts to play. And lastly, I alluded to this earlier, but this is Tekken as we know it, but at its finest. The gameplay doesn't do anything too different, but it doesn't need to, as it's some good old Tekken. Round one. Fight. Onto the mix, these are issues I have that are either surrounding the game and not really issues with the game itself, or these are things that I can go either way on. One issue that is really surrounding the game, and not with the game itself, is the installation. I know a lot of games do this, but it's just very annoying to be notified that the game is, quote, ready to play, just to open it and see that many modes and characters are not available because the game hasn't actually finished installing. Once again, it's not an issue with Tekken 8, but rather an issue surrounding the game, and I know a lot of games do this now, but doesn't mean I like it. The other thing I'm mixed on is the arcade mode. Not arcade quest, as I liked that, but the normal arcade ladder mode. There is nothing particularly offensive about it, and it's really difficult to really fuck up a fighting game arcade mode, and Tekken 8 doesn't fuck it up necessarily. But I feel like when I play the arcade mode, the game kind of just doesn't really give you anything. You get a lot of coins, which is neat and all, but no unique ending to the character, which I know Tekken doesn't do that too much, but like no credits, nothing you unlock afterwards. You sort of just pick a character, and fight other characters until you fight a boss, and that's it. I have it under mix because I'm not offended or anything like that, and I still had fun with the arcade mode, and like I said, it's really hard to- you have to try to fuck up an arcade mode to a fighting game, but it feels like it's sorta of just there. Moving on to the bad, I got a couple of small issues. One is something I mentioned earlier, and that was how the game crashed on me during the Tekken Lounge. It only happened once, but I wasn't doing anything too crazy, I was just running around the area, and like I said, it never happened again, but if a game even crashes on me once, I'm inclined to mention it in the bad. The other issue I have, which I also alluded to earlier when I mentioned that I don't love how Arcade Quest is executed at times, and while this is also a small complaint, but a complaint nonetheless. What I meant when I said I don't love how it's executed sometimes, what I mean when I say I don't love how it was executed is that sometimes you get these matches that you do up to a certain goal you have to reach, which is fine and all, but on your way to that goal, the matches kind of repeat themselves. It's a nitpick, I guess, but still, you'll fight characters that you've just fought on the same stage that you just fought them on, even with the same costume that they had when you fought them. It's a really minor complaint, but I felt like bringing it up. Round 2. 
地に変えても大事な人たちを守りたいそのためにはお前の力が必要だ Even though it has some small issues and some minor things I'm mixed on, Tekken 8 really is Tekken at its finest. The characters on display in this game is one thing already, but then throw in the amount of content like the story, arcade quests, the online, along with the online lounge which adds so much more personality and a slew of customization options all over the game, Tekken 8 is not only a great Tekken game or a great fighting game, but it shows that 2024 is off to an amazing start and could possibly even still be one of the best games of the year by December. That being said, I'm going to give Tekken 8 a 9.5 out of 10. But that was my review for Tekken 8. Sorry this is taking a little while to go up, but uh, what do you guys think of this game? Do you guys like it? Not like it? Do you guys agree with me? Not agree with me? You guys, have you guys played it? Not played it? And if you haven't played it, do you guys want to play it? Not want to play it? Anything about the game, let me know down below. Anyways, be sure to like this video, come subscribe, or I will throw you off of a cliff. Bye!